and we're going to read verses 34 through 31. Excuse me, 34 through 41. And the inspiration for <coughs> this sermon came last week as early every morning I would take Kelly in for a walk up or down the beach right as the sun was shining. And after we'd walk for a while and she'd look up at me like, don't you want to rest a little while? We'd sit down and do the sand sometimes. And I just sit and I looked over the water as far as I could look. And I saw the beauty of the sun coming up over the ocean. And the Lord gave this to me as I prayed what to speak about today. And the title of our sermon today is Navigating the Seas of Our Lives. Navigating the Seas of Our Lives. Now, if you study this, we note that this, these scriptures and this story is mentioned twice in the New Testament in two separate books. It not only is in Mark 4, 34 through 41, but it's also in Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 and 27. And what that tells me, guys, is that there is a significant point that we need to be understanding for our lives today. You know, in some times in our life, or let me rephrase that, in life period, we are going to all go through some significant storms. Now, it may not be lightning and thundering or wind or rain like we see in a physical storm, but you and I are going to see possibly physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual storms in our life. And I'm sure some of us can name a few we've already been through but possibly not everyone. And who knows? Maybe you're in a storm in your life right now. And the Bible provides us with help in these cases. Jesus and his <coughs> disciples were in a storm in this, in this story. But you know, if you read through the Bible, you'll find they were no strangers to storms. But this specific storm, let's read about it. Beginning in verse 35. And it said, In the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there also arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship. Now I want you to pay attention to that. I had never paid that any attention until I was sitting on the beach and was reading this on my iPhone. It didn't say the waves were beating onto the ship. It says they were beating into the ship. The water was coming on board. Amen. So that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him and say, Master, Care us not while we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the seas obey him? Now, I want you to imagine this scene for just a moment. And when I was reading this, uh, Joe loves to go out deep sea fishing way out in the ocean. Me, I don't even get in the ocean. We go to the beach and I don't even get in the water. But in addition to that, as I was reading this, I stopped and I looked out over the ocean and as far as I could see was water. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't think I'd be too comfortable out there where I couldn't see dry land. I think I can swim pretty good, but I don't believe I can swim that good. And in this scripture, the disciples were fearing for their lives. The waves were tossing and turning in the boat. It says almost that it was full. And my Mark in this describes mm -hmm. it with how the waves were beating into the boat. They thought they were going to die, guys. And as the water crashed over the sides, it was threatening its interiority. Now, I can understand that just watching the water toss and turn. And what did they do? They woke up Jesus. And what did they say to him? Do you not care that we're perishing? Does this sound like anything you and I have ever done or said? 
You know, when life is going just right, whether it's health, finances, work, or anything else, we're all good. We're good. But how many times when you've been in that sea of turmoil in your life have you thought, God, do you even care? Are you even hearing me? Are you seeing your child down here? Now, if any of you tell me that you've never done this, this altar is open, so get on up here before I even get started. I tell the teenagers, don't even start shaking your head no. We'll have to go out and look at the altar. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. The disciples were doing that, and they had Jesus on board. It was like, God, do you even care? Can't you see we're drowning up here? You know, in all reality, though, they had no idea how much God loved them. <coughs> and he cared about them perishing. Because if they had, they would have remembered why his earthly journey was here to begin with. Jesus came to earth to die so you and I could be saved eternally. Amen. Amen. What did he do, though? Instead of getting up and saying, you dumb kids, he got up and he said, calm be still. <coughs> he calmed the waters. He brought the calm with his power. And then how did they respond? How do you and I respond? How did they respond? When he brought the great that, they transitioned from fear of the storm to totally, awesomely, fearfully struck by the fear of God. Because they realized, <coughs> and this is what they said, who can this be that even the wind and the seas obey him? And you know, there's a whole lot of different ways I could go with this story. Now, I'm not going to kid y'all. When I went back to the hotel, <coughs> and Joe and Tina went out for the evening, I typed almost 15 pages on the computer. And I thought, well, this won't work. They'll get up and leave at 12 o'clock. <laughs> this ain't going to work. So I began to pray. And God gave me, you know, because folks, we all have to or will have to negate our lives through the storms. But I'm limiting my thoughts today to three simple principles. Number one and first is we've got to understand God controls it all. Amen. <clears throat> they were in this boat, but God was in control. Jesus demonstrated his power. He demonstrated his character, his trust in God's will and plan for why he was here by the ability to stop the storm with just his words. And this should encourage each of us. From our vantage point, it may be very difficult for us to see sometimes how God's controlling our circumstances. In fact, you possibly just see Jesus asleep on his pillow because you're saying, well, Lord, where are you? Are you not hearing my prayers? Are you not listening? But guys, don't be confused by that. Because we have to understand God is in control. And if we are putting our trust in Him, He will navigate us. It's, it's no matter what you and I are facing. <coughs> we can be successful through the weather and the storms of our lives. But we have to be willing to understand and trust, not just understand, but trust, that if we abide in him and he in us, he's in control and we can rest in that. I've heard people say this. I've heard songs about it and I've even seen bumper stickers. And it says, God doesn't say there wouldn't be any storms, but he promised to bring you through them. So Amen. I can assure you, the storms are going to come. Amen. It's where you stand with the Lord and the fact that you understand he's in control. He calmed the storm. He didn't zap them out of the boat on the dry land <clears throat> at all. He didn't just cause the water to be gone so they wouldn't worry. But he calmed the storm so that the boat could continue its journey and its destination with safety to all those on board. And sometimes when you're going through the things in your life and you don't understand and it looks like you're drowning, whether it's medically because of medical conditions, financially, a job, no matter what it is, maybe it's family, it doesn't matter what it is. If it looks like you think you're going to drown, you need to remember God is in control. 
And he will not necessarily take you out of that storm, but he'll bring you through it if you'll trust in him. If you'll trust in him. Second, Jesus was with them in the storm. God not only controls all things, and Jesus not only told the wind and stuff to be still, but he was right there with them. His presence provided them with a stability in the midst of that storm. You and I have to remember and understand that Jesus is with us through all the storms of our life. He reminded them. And when, <clears throat> even when they were suffering from their lack of faithfulness, he reminded them. He responded to them. He ministered to them. He asked them, why do you not trust me? I hope the Lord don't ever have to ask me that. Why do you not trust me? We have to remember he is looking out for our best interest. You know, that's a quick, real question to each of us. Why do we not trust him? Have you ever been where you really just didn't trust what God was doing with your life? Sure we have. We have to remember Jesus. Jesus is with us through the storm. There's nothing that I'm going to face that he's not going to take care of. Now, here was the catch that I thought of, and this is not in my notes. As I was sitting there, way back in the distance, I saw a boat or a ship or something going. I don't know what type of boat it was. Sometimes Joanne will tell me it's a crabber or different type of fishing boat. But I saw it in the waves as it moved up and down. And as it did, I thought to myself, I wonder what's going on that's got them going that direction. And a lot of times in our lives, we need to stop and remember that God is navigating the seas of our life, but we need to stay on course with where he wants us to go and not get off course. That's why these ships and these boats have all these navigation systems, so they can stay on course, and the captain follows that. We need to keep our navigation system, which is our spiritual lives, totally in tune with God, following God, trusting God, so we don't get off course. Because one of the things you're going to see is the ways of life sometimes are going to be totally different. Each day on the beach, because of the storm that was coming up down in the down in the wherever it was out in the ocean, one day we had a yellow flag on the on the lifeguard stand. One day we had a red flag, and one day we had a green flag. So I was asking the kids, and we looked up what those flags meant. That green means go, by the way. It's safe. You can get in that water. Well, that's the day Tina got in the water, and the fish started stumping, so she got out of the water, which meant there was something after the fish. So everybody got out of the water. And then there was the time there was a yellow flag which was telling us there were high, heavy winds and major undercurrents that you could get out there and think you were okay and all of a sudden the undertow would put you under. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't have Jesus with you in the storm, the undercurrent of this world will take you under, buddy. Amen. And it will take you sometimes till you drown. I watched little kids as they went out in that water that would be directly in front of their mama and just in a minute playing, they'd be way down here because the current was carrying them out of the direction and away from where they needed to be. You and I have got to make sure that we know that Jesus is with us and that he's in control so that we don't get tied up in the undercurrents of life. How do we do that? By trusting in him. Having an awesome knowledge in our hearts, not just in our head. You can have a lot of head knowledge, guys. A lot of people can have head knowledge. You can be as smart as a whip in every way. But unless you apply it to your life and unless Jesus Christ is directing your life, it's not going to do you one. As my grandpa used to say, I owe the good. He has got to have control. And we've got to know that he's with us through the storm. Thirdly, the lesson the disciples learned and their, in, their response instructs each of us very well for our lives. Today, you could be full of fear. And your energy may seem totally depleted. Have you ever got so worked up dealing with a situation that you feel like you were just drained? 
that you could just drop? Have you? We have to understand. And we have more questions than we have, to un than we have answers. We have to understand from this lesson. And we don't have to be that way. Because Jesus is with us through the storm. Disappointments, discouragement, discontentment. Sometimes it will possibly loom in the shadow of your heart. But not just today, but a lot of days. There are people who have literally, literally taken their own lives totally out of despair because Jesus was not in control of their lives and they felt there was no way to turn. The undercurrent of life took them down. And let me tell you something, folks. Do you know what that undercurrent is? It is the devil himself. He is going to put things out there to try to drag you down. He's going to put things out there to try to pull you under so that you feel like there's no hope. And I'm going to tell you right now, not you, not I, not anybody in this building, not one person is big enough to take the devil on, on their own. You better make sure that God's in control. And you better make sure that you've got Jesus with you through the storm. Because if you don't, it's the same as being out there in one of those big boats with no navigation, with no captain, just going afloat. There's no telling where your life will end. And it can be very destructive. Because one of the things I've realized over time by going to the beach is there's big reefs out there. And if you run up on one of those reefs, you sometimes will totally get stuck. And I've watched programs where ships were navigating through the water and they got too close and they hit and they damaged the ship and it sunk. The devil is out to sink your spiritual ship. So you better make sure that Jesus is with you through the storms. Like the disciples, though, we have to sometimes, guys, call out and cry out. And when we do, we can rest in the fear of God. You know what? Every time I step behind this desk, I have a terrible fear. You don't see that, do you? That fear is there because every time I speak a word on behalf of the Lord, I am a delegate for him. And I am held accountable for everything I do and everything I say. Amen. And that is why it is so important to make sure that we are navigating the seas of our life with Jesus Christ at the helm. We need to be humble and we need to be challenged by the integrity, the courage, the strength, and the love Jesus shows us during the storms of our lives. We need to be more trustworthy. I think one of the reasons, you know, the thought came to me, Jesus knew the storm was going to occur. What did he do? He went and went to sleep. He got in the back of the boat and went to sleep, but he's had on the bill and went to sleep. I think some of that has an implication to us to remind us that we forget even when we think he's not there, he's there. And when he calmed the sea, it was to give them the example that I got this, guys. I've got you. I've got you covered. And I think sometimes, to almost to the point that it's sinful, even as Christians, we fall short in that category because we question God in some of the storms of our lives. No, time, no doubt there's going to be times in our lives when we fall short. And for all of us. Is everything in our lives perfect? Absolutely not. Is everything going to be perfect? No, it's not. And you're not going to always get it totally right. Because you're human. And you've got a human aspect. Yet God's grace and strength will enable a person to be preserved. Because he's with us. You know, I've watched people have an incredible amount of personal sacrifice. It doesn't go unnoticed, although a lot of times we don't have any depth, any idea of the depth of their sacrifice. When most of the world chooses to sin as a response to intensive suffering, 
hard times fall in our lives, we have to choose not to. When others may complain, we shouldn't complain, folks. We should never complain. I know we do, but we shouldn't. I've never known a day that I've gone hungry. I've never known a day I've not had a roof over my head. I've never known a day I've not been protected, even on our trip. Well, the one night we went out, I think I had just talked to Diane earlier that night. We were coming down the street, and all of a sudden we heard this tire squall and brakes go on and this terrible thud. I looked in my rear view mirror, and there was a truck behind me. And right as he started to get over in this lane, this car come over here and T-boned him. Tore the whole side out of his car, the whole front end out of the other one. I looked up, there were people jumping out of their cars going, and I said a prayer private, Joe said, what you gonna do? And I said, keep going. What are you saying? Jesus was with us. The Lord was with us. He, we had his protective graces. God has got your back, folks. He is with you. And if you are navigating the sea of life with him as your captain and as your ham, you're okay. With God in control of all things, <clears throat> With God, this is what happens. He's in control of all things. He's with us in the storm. And we have a fear of him out of love for him. Have you ever been to the point that you didn't want to please anybody? Did you didn't care? With God, it ought to be just the opposite. The fear we have should be the fear that, God, am I doing enough? Am I trusting you enough? Am I listening to you enough? I told the teens this morning, do y'all have any idea why God give us one mouth and two ears? Is to keep it shut more and listen more. Amen. He wants us to talk a lot less than he wants us to listen. You ask me, why do I say these things? Sometimes, guys, you may get it right and other times you may not. In your own personal storm, though, through it all, you need to know that the storm is only going to be devastating if Jesus Christ is not at the storm. I don't care what you're going through. Now, folks, the Lord may take me out of here of terminal cancer. I don't know. I don't know how my hand's going to come, but I know this much. However it is, thy will be done, not mine, because he's my captain. And he's at the stern, and he's controlling my life. And the only thing I have ever asked of God is two things. I've asked the Lord to let me live my life with dignity, giving honor to him, <coughs> my husband's name and my parents' name. And number two, that I serve him that would be pleasing to him to the day I die. That's all I ask for. But even in order to accomplish that, I have to make sure that I'm navigating the sea of my life with him at the head. As I begin to get ready to close, there's four things I'm grateful for. First, and I think we all should do this, I'm grateful that God's in control and he loves you and I deeply in the midst of our storms and he is actively participating in our lives. Second, I'm thankful that God allows us to share our burden together. You know, the disciples were going through this together. It wasn't just one of them all excited. It was all of them excited together. And you know, that's what a church family is all about. That's what being brothers and sisters in Christ is all about. You know, we can come here and we can go through a protocol. But really being the church is loving one another. Being there for each other. Amen. I call you at night and tell you I need you to get on your knees and pray. To feel free to be able to do that. To be able to sit down with you and say, I just need to share this to have somebody to talk to. That's what it's all about. And the disciples were in that position. They were in it together. Because why? I think one of the implications of this story is when you and I are going through things together, we're a much closer knit bond. You ever taken a rope and looked at what it's made of? Jimmy told me this years ago when we were taking one cattle. You can take a rope and cut it, but if you don't burn the ends of it, it'll rattle. 
But he cut a rope one day, and he said, you don't have anything upon this rope that's so strong? And I said, no, babe, fine. He started unwinding it. And before we were done, there were seven different strands to that rope that were all woven together to make that one rope. That's how you and I should be, sharing this thing together. Thirdly, I rejoice that you and I both can cry out to God. The good thing is I don't have to ask anybody if I can call on God. And I can't tell you how many times in the middle of the night that I've cried out and said, God, I need you. But it's also great that we can do it together. But you know what the important thing is? The telephone line is never busy. It's never disconnected. Or it's never that the signal's not strong enough. He listens. He cares. And he's there. And more than that, the third thing also is in my crying out to him is that he gives me his word. And we need to read and meditate on his word and seek it and apply it to our lives, especially in the midst of our storm. If these disciples had had their choice at that moment in time and had had the least little bit of land close to them, what might have they done? They might have jumped ship and got on the dry land. They might have. But they were out where they couldn't. God doesn't want in us trying to jump ship for some kind of land. He wants us to seek Him. And in the midst of that storm, He'll pull us through. Through God's Word, God's people, and His prominent care, He will help us navigate through the storms of life. He will not let you down. His navigation system is not inaccurate. When you think, Lord, where are you heading me? Just hold on and trust God. Amen. He's got you. Fourth, I am thankful that even though we cannot be with each other and with our friends all the time, especially when they're going through the, the, the storms of their lives, the Lord is with them. There's times when you as families have gone through personal things in your families sickness, death, all of that. I would love to have just been there, but I couldn't. But Jesus is there. He's got you. I can pray for you, but Jesus is there. He will never leave us or forsake us. He promises us that. And he showed them that. Even though he was back there asleep when they woke him up, I can just see him smile. I can just see him smile. I got you guys. With his eyes, he's looking at him saying, I got this. I got you taken care of. So in closing, I ask you this. What will be on the other side of the storm of our lives? I don't know the terms or the specs of this life. Although that that I hope for and about which I pray may or may not come. But I do know this as well. You, me, all of us can trust God because he does know what is on the other side of the storms of your life. He will help you and he will direct you and he will help us live our daily journey through the storm. Ultimately looking forward to the journey to the other side of eternity. Because folks, that's what I'm working for. I'm working for home. This is a dressing room for heaven. I'm looking for home. Billy.